All right, in this video, I want to talk about the derivatives of the inverse trig functions, and here's the formulas for the six of them, in case you don't have them handy. Um, and I just want to do three different problems here. You just really need to remember to use the same old properties, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, um, and then really that's it. Just, just use them along with these formulas. So the first one I'm going to do here will be the f of x one. So it says if f of x is inverse sine of x squared. It says if we take the derivative of that, we'll have to use the chain rule. So the 2 comes out front, we leave the inside part alone, take 1 away from the exponent, and then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And again, we saw that the derivative of the inside um, is just going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And there's really not a lot else you can do with this. I don't know, you could write it as a single fraction and put the square root on the bottom. But other than that, there's not a ton of simplification that you can do. Okay, so pretty straightforward, nothing, nothing too crazy here. I think the next one, um, the last two are a little more typical. Um, so g of t equals arc cosine of square root of 2t minus 1. So here we're going to have to remember to use the chain rule. So it says the derivative of arc cosine, it says we get negative, I'll put the negative on top, 1 minus, and it says whatever's next to the arc cosine, it says that stuff gets squared. Well, the stuff that's being squared is the square root of 2t minus 1. But then we have to take the derivative of 2t minus 1, the square root of that. And remember, I could write that as 2t minus 1 to the 1 half power. Well, if I take the derivative of the square root portion, again, that's equivalent to this stuff. Well, the derivative, it says it'll be 1 half. I leave the inside alone, 2t minus 1 to the negative 1 half. But then again, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside of that stuff, which is just going to be times 2. All right, so I guess we could simplify this down maybe a little bit. If we square the square root underneath the radical, um, we're just going to get 1 minus 2t minus 1 after we square that square root. So notice the 1 half and the 2 would cancel. It looks like we have negative 1 on top. Underneath the square root, we'll get, um, it looks like, 1 minus 2t plus 1. So it looks like we'll get 2t plus 2 underneath. And then um, we'll have 2t minus 1 to the negative 1 half. And I can move that back to the denominator and make it a square root and make it 2t um, minus 1 to the positive 1 half. Or again, just rewrite that simply as a radical. OK, so whoops, I think I, I totally left my negative off. I knew I was doing something weird back here. So negative 2t um, plus 2 underneath the radical. Too early in the morning for me. Okay, everything else looks alright, I think. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do one last problem here. <coughs> and here we're going to take the derivative of uh, this y function here. And the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this because I've actually thrown some logarithms in here too. So we'll just have to combine a couple ideas. This is a 1 over a x, so a is just a number in this case. And I could rewrite this. I could write the natural logarithm. Remember properties of natural logarithms. I could rewrite this to the 1 half power. So the 1 half would come out front, and I would get ln of x minus a over x plus a. But remember division with logarithms can actually turn into subtraction. So we can actually bust this thing up one more time. So I'm going to make this ln of x minus a minus ln of x plus a when I get rid of the denominator. But then also to remember this 1 half is now going to have to get distributed to everything. So we'll have to be careful about that. So let's go ahead and do that, I say. So we'll get 1 half the natural logarithm of x minus a. <clears throat> and then we'll get uh, minus one half the natural logarithm of x plus a. 
Okay, so when we go to take the derivative, it says we get 1 over 1 plus the stuff squared, so we'll get x over a quantity squared. Then we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is just going to be 1 over a. The derivative of the natural logarithm will get 1 half times 1 over x minus a minus 1 half times 1 over x plus a. Okay, so there's our derivative. We could clean this up a little bit, it looks like. Um, so we get 1 over 1 plus x squared over a squared. I really don't know how much I want to clean this up. I could multiply the a into the denominator. Um, and then we have 1 over 2 times x minus a minus 1 over 2 times x plus a. Let's see, um, a couple other things we could do here. I'm trying to think if it would actually be useful. Um, we could actually multiply top and bottom of the first fraction by an extra a, so that'll give me a on top and a squared on the bottom if I multiply top and bottom by an extra a. So on top I'll get a, if I distribute I'll get a squared plus x squared, and then again I'm not going to do much of anything with the rest of it. Okay, so hey, there would be the derivative. Um, if you wanted to, you could always get common denominators, but I don't see why that would help really in this case so much. But, all right, I hope these examples make some sense. Feel free to post questions if you have them, and hopefully either me or somebody can get to them.